In other news today, former uh, Trump attorney Michael Cohen is back on the stand in Trump's criminal trial. The former president arrived in court this morning, flanked by members of the Republican Party, including House Speaker Mike Johnson. The speaker rallied against the former president's case outside the courthouse. Let's listen. This is the, the, the fifth week that President Trump has been in court for this sham of a trial. They are doing this intentionally to keep him here and keep him off of the campaign trail. And I think everybody in the country can see that. I want to bring in CBS News national correspondent and our own anchor here, Errol Barnett, who was in the courtroom in Manhattan this morning. Errol, great to have you. So, I mean, this seems every day more like a campaign uh, on top of, of what's happening inside the courtroom. But let's stick to the facts of this case, which is what's happening in that court. What have we heard in terms of the testimony from Michael Cohn? Well, Lilia, this morning, the 12-person jury finally got to the bedrock evidence central to this case. Remember, we're speaking about what the prosecution says, a 34 felony counts of falsified business records to cover up an alleged sexual encounter uh, ahead of the 2016 election. Michael Cohen continued his testimony this morning as prosecutors methodically brought out each of those 34 charges, or at least 11 checks and their 11 corresponding invoices that Cohen testified were his reimbursement payments for services rendered. But each and every time the prosecutor asked about an individual check, we saw a sequence of questions. The prosecutor would ask, um, you know, what are we looking at here? And he will say, he says, Cohen says, it's the invoice. Um, and uh, he, when, when the prosecution asks, it says for services rendered, um, Cohen confirmed, but it was not for services rendered. These were repayments made to me. Did you receive this check in relation to the false invoice, the prosecution asked Cohen, and he said yes. The prosecution then asked, can you see the signature on this check? And he says yes. Please read the name on the signature. And Cohen would say Donald J. Trump, uh, uh, Mr. Trump, or in one instance he said it was actually Eric Trump who signed, or Donald Trump Jr., I should say, who signed a check. They didn't just rush through this, Lilia. This is what the prosecution says proves um, that all of the... We We've heard up and, until now these 16 days of testimony, the, the salacious details about affairs, the complicated web of how lawyers worked with um, tabloids to suppress stories. It led mm. to this moment today uh, with Cohen in a very calm uh, demeanor, slowly confirming that these checks were made to him, totaling some $420,000 mm. as a repayment for the hush money payment to cover up the Stormy Daniels uh, sexual encounter. So a crucial moment for the prosecution. Yeah. and for the jury inside the room, this is what has been laid out in front of them as we speak. And, and Errol, if you don't mind, take us inside that courtroom. I mean, I'm curious how the jury was reacting, what's been uh, Trump's demeanor. Talk to us a little bit about what was going on as these key moments and, or, or facts of the case were playing out. Yeah. Lilia, it's quite incredible, you know, to be in the courtroom. You see how close um, everyone is to each other. So, you know, former President Trump is there um, next to the judge and ahead of Michael Cohen. He didn't seem to look at him directly during his testimony. And I think in some of the images we see uh, Mr. Trump leaning forward onto the desk during Cohen's testimony today, he was leaned back. Um, the jury, which is interesting, I saw some of them not just scribbling down notes in their lap as Cohen spoke, but some of them, in fact, had turned in their seats to face him directly. Directly, just evidence that they are fully mm. engaged in everything he's saying, especially because these um, exhibits and his testimony, crafting the narrative around it, are crucial to weaving together the final fabric of what is the prosecution's uh, case. Uh, during the break, we did see um, Donald Trump exit the courtroom with his legal team, looking quite demure, not looking um, as if he enjoyed what he was witnessing and is forced to sit through, um, and some of his Republican supporters and colleagues from Capitol Hill and elsewhere are here as well, kind of doing what they can outside the courtroom to spread his message, because, of course, we know that Mr. Trump has been punished for speaking out um, against uh, witnesses and, in fact, the jury. So it's, 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 it remains fascinating to watch to see a former president forced to sit in a courtroom as a criminal defendant as the prosecution lays out what they say are the key aspects of this um, election interference case. Errol, uh, it's interesting because under the gag order and given the limited uh, time that he has to campaign, 
Some would argue that the less Trump speaks, the better it serves him campaign-wise. And now we have you know, the speaker there in attendance. Talk to us about how this is all playing out for Trump politically and for Johnson, whose own position was in jeopardy. Well, it's quite ironic, Lilia, because um, all of this, according to testimony, was a story Donald Trump didn't want made public because it would impact his presidential chances in 2016. But if you look at recent swing state polling, Mr. Trump is leading uh, President Biden. If you look at his support, um, it has only really stayed stable. There's no evidence of his support collapsing because of any of these legal cases, specifically this one. And so while you have his surrogates outside um, campaigning on his behalf, it appears that this trial and the stories that it's um, elevating and spreading through the press has not damaged political support among Trump supporters. It's all fascinating, Errol, and you're bringing it all in real time. Much appreciated. Yeah, you got it.